Hello YouTube, it's Farmer Sam Prepping here. So I thought today I would uh, make a video about silver stacking. Uh, no, I am not a silver channel, but I am a prepping channel. And if you watch silver stacking channels, most of them don't talk about it, but they're all preppers as well. Uh, so I'm not going to change my name to Silver Stock or whatever because I'm staying with prepping. They got away from the prepping title because you get less views on you know Google if you have prepping attached to your name. I don't care. Uh, so I thought I would explain to you some of the uh, some of what I've learned uh, and not trying to show off here and i'm by no means a silver or uh expert or whatever uh i'm still learning uh terms and phrases and what they mean uh because there was a lot of this stuff i didn't understand when i first started and i thought i would just make this video those of you who aren't silver stackers or don't believe in it you can go uh those of you here like to learn more, maybe, like I am, trying to learn more, uh, you know, stick around. I think I can help you out. Uh, so you hear a lot of a lot of uh, terms being used: uh, spot price, melt price, premiums. You know, you hear you hear these th these terms. Spot price is the price per ounce of silver on that given day now it, it spot price changes every day and it usually changes throughout the day as well uh today is december 10th 2022 today's silver spot price is 2367 today's gold spot price is uh eighteen hundred four dollars and 89 cents that's on december 10th 2022 so that's what the spot price is uh, there are those of us who think that this price is just kind of a made-up thing, uh, you know, because there are certain people who put out the spot price, and I'm kind of, I kind of believe it's just a made-up price, really. Uh, but anyway, more to go. Melt price. <clears throat> In coin shops, or uh, if you watch silver channels or that type of stuff, coin collection channels, you hear the term melt price thrown around. Typically, when you hear the, the term melt price thrown around, they're talking about constitutional silver or junk silver, like this Morgan I have right here. This is a Morgan dollar, 1885. Uh, when it comes to melt price, what they are talking about here, <clears throat> this is a 90% silver coin. This is not a 100% silver coin. It's only 90%. So the melt price that they're talking about is the 90% of silver that's in here. What it would uh, what it would bring uh, for just the 90% part. Uh, part. Let me... Uh, the Morgan and the Peace Dollars, they are 0 0.77344 troy ounces. So that's the exact amount of silver in this coin. Not the total weight, mind you, but the amount of silver in this coin. So when you hear the melt term float around, they're talking about, typically they're either talking about world silver, uh, uh, mixed coins from other countries, or they're talking about 90% silver uh, in the United States. Uh, so if you hear the term melt float around, and it took me a long time to find, to find the answer to that question out. I can't tell you how many YouTube uh, silver stacking channels I asked what melt price means. They did not know. Uh, so, you know, not everything is it appears on YouTube, as usual, of course. But uh, melt price, typically, what that means is uh, what you can get for the 90% of this coin. The 90% that is silver. So I wanted to go over that. And not all coins are 90% silver in the United States. Here's an Eisenhower dollar. Some of the Eisen, I know my hands are like in the way, but uh, this is an Eisenhower dollar. 
uh, certain years of the Eisenhower dollar from 1971 to 1978 are 40% silver. So this is a, a silver clad coin, as it's called, silver and clad mixed. 40% uh, silver. Some of your Kennedys are 40% silver as well. Your 1965 up through 72, I think, on the Kennedys is 40 or 35% or 40% silver. So when you hear the term melt price, they're typically talking about a coin that is not 100% silver or 99.9, .9, whatever. That term... Uh, a, a, a term for a coin that is 99.9 .9 or 99.99% .99 silver is bullion. Uh, this is a 007, uh, the Royal Mint, James Bond, silver bar to one ounce. These are 99.99% .99 pure. They can't put 100% pure because there's really no way to know if a coin's 100% pure. When you've got a vat of liquid silver and you scraped all the impurities out, there's no way they can know if they got them all. So they do the 99.99% or the 99.9% .9 like we do in America. Uh, so these types of coins are referred to as bullion. Bullion means complete silver, uh, nothing else but silver in the coin. Now... Gold bullion is a little bit different. I don't have any gold bullion here to show you, but like the gold eagles as opposed to the silver eagle, which here, I got one right here, silver eagle. Uh, the gold eagles are more than one ounce. The complete weight of a gold eagle is more than one ounce of gold. But there's one ounce of gold in the mix. So they're still considered one full ounce of gold, even though... Uh, I don't, I don't keep up with gold stuff, but anyway, the gold eagles are more, the total weight of a gold eagle is more than one ounce because they have a little bit of something else in there with them. I don't know if it's copper or nickel or what. But anyhow, I wanted to talk about that. Uh, what else? Uh, premium, the word premium. You hear that? Well, this has a such and such premium. The premium is any price that someone is charging over spot. And again, spot is that price that changes every day. So some coins have a high premium, some do not. Now on that, 99.9% .9 of what I have in my stack is what you'd call generic uh, silver. Uh, these are from JM Bullion. I know they're hard to see, they're in a capsule. JM Bullion, I have some also from uh, from S, <clears throat> excuse me, from SD bullion as well, uh, but this is not the only kinds. They make, uh, you know, the buffalo, the silver buffaloes that are uh, generic silver, uh, silver town. Uh, they make all kind of generic silver rounds. They're not really coins because they don't have a dollar value on them. But uh, premium is uh, any price that's being charged over spot. Okay, now. On the premiums in the spot, the reason why I have this 007 thing right here is because when I went to buy some silver one time, this was all they had. They did not have any generic silver bars. And uh, I had a few bucks left in my account at that on that day, whenever it was. These were the only two, these were the only one out silver bars available, which is the only reason why I bought them. So, and I did not pay, but I don't think two or three dollars over spot for these. So, uh, when it comes to premiums, now collectors, uh, people tend to want to collect certain types of coins, uh, silver eagles or, uh, other world mints, uh, coins. A lot of, a lot of the other mints, they have collections like an animal collection or uh, the Chinese stuff like the year of the dog, year of the rabbit, whatever. People like to collect those types of coins, but I'm going to tell you. You're going to lose money on that stuff. And these art bars, these silver, these poured silver art bars, and these Engelhard, these, there's people that collect these Engelhard bars. Uh, you're going to pay up for that kind of stuff. And you're not going to get that money back. Anything you pay 
over spot on all of these art bars and these uh, Engelhards and all that stuff and these Royal Mint stuff, you're not going to get your money back on that when you go to your coin shop and say, hey, I need to change all this in for cash or whatever. They're going to pay spot. That's all they're going to pay is spot. Okay, so if you're spending money above spot for coins, and for these, you're spending money for generics too over spot, but it's two, you know, two, three bucks on the, uh, here we go, on these uh, Silver Eagles, uh, it's been up to like $15, $16 over spot price, the premiums, some higher than that. Uh, so these, I bought all these, the five eagles that I do have, I bought them, uh, in 2015. So, uh, in 2020. So these were before the high premiums. Uh, and that's what I was early in my stocking. I did not really understand what I wanted to get into as far as buying yet. And if you talk to somebody who has had to cash in their silver, they'll tell you this as well. You're only going to get spot. They're not going to give you nothing over. So you can collect all these fancy, schmancy, uh, 10 ounce kilo bars, whatever, in these 10 ounce coins, and you can collect all that stuff, but you're not going to get your money back on it. You're only going to get spot, whatever spot is on that day when you cash it in. Uh, and that is something that i am really been learning about here lately because... Uh, if you're going to collect all kind of cool silver poured bars and this, that, and the other, that's all fine, but you're not going to get your extra money back. You're going to lose money when you have to trade them in uh, back for money when you go to cash them out, whatever it's called. So uh, I wanted to bring that to you. Uh, that's why most of my stack, aside from five silver eagles and these two James Bond things, uh, most of my stuff is generic silver uh, because I'm paying less over spot, two or three bucks over spot. A lot of the coin shops right now will pay you two dollars over spot for uh, for a uh, generic right now. Well, that's a commemorative, but whatever. Uh, when the silver price goes up, like let's say this is twenty three, let me say it was twenty three dollars and something today. If this goes up to $55 an ounce, they're not going to pay uh, anything over spot. They're already having to pay more for it for spot price. So if you, if I bought this, uh, I think it was 18 or 19 bucks when I bought this one. So if I take this, they're going to give me spot and that's it. Uh, if it goes up, you know, if the price goes up per spot price to $55 an ounce, they're going to pay that 55 and that's it. And then they're going to resell it for 57 because they got to make money too. That's how coin shops work. There are no coin shops in my area where I live. There are some in Birmingham. And I think there's one in Aniana, if it's still open, I'm not sure. But those are a good hour drive away from where I live. So I typically do the online, the JM or the SD Bullion, reputable sites. Uh, online. That's kind of how I've been stacking my silver. Uh, so, uh, what else? Uh, anything 99.9% .9 silver is considered bullion. I talked about that. Uh, a bullion round has one full ounce of silver in it. Even if the, the can you know, like the gold eagle, even if the whole weight of the coin is more than an ounce, there's an ounce of silver or gold in that coin. So, um, junk silver uh, or uh, constitutional silver, like our old Morgan here. And here we got a Kennedy, a couple of Kennedy half dollars, 64. Uh, that stuff, the premiums have been pretty high on that as well. Uh, but from what I understand, the, the premiums on this stuff is starting to go down. And it's, it's, it's good to have some, some uh, junk silver or whatever uh, for smaller denominations. Like here's a, uh, a Mercury Dime, you know, a little Merc. Uh, or Winged Liberty, whatever you want to call it. Uh, you know, it's good to have some smaller pieces of silver. 
And instead of spending way more money for those Valcombi bars where you get one gram and you break them off, you're paying way, way high premiums on that stuff. And instead of doing that, it's just easier to get a roll of dimes or a roll of quarters or whatever, you know, 64 and older, of course, on the Mercury's. Uh, of course, the Mercury's are going to be way older. Or your Rosie's or your uh, your half dollars, your Benji's or your Kennedy's. Uh, so, you know, you have to think about the end goal here. You want your money back out of this stuff. That's why you're buying it, to put it back for hard times. Or after an SHTF event is over, uh, this is more like a wealth preservation type of deal than it is a get rich quick. Oh, I'm going to buy an 18 and sell it 50. Yeah, you might make a little money, but that's not guaranteed. Okay. The only thing you can bet on is silver is when you go to change it in for something else or cash or whatever, you're only going to get spot. That's the only thing you can bet on with silver is you're going to get spot and that's all. And the only other the only other thing you can bet on is when you go buy silver, you're going to pay more than spot because if you didn't do that, the coin shops wouldn't be able to make any money at all. And, you know, for them to stay open, they have to make money. They have to be in the black. Uh, let's see, am I forgetting anything? I think that's basically about covered everything I wanted to talk about. Uh, as far as silver goes, what I've been learning. Uh, you know, if you're gonna do this, if you're gonna stack silver and stuff, uh, you need to know a lot about it. And I'm still learning myself. So, if there's something I've gotten wrong, put it in the comments. Uh, like I said, I'm not a uh, silver expert. I'm still learning on all this stuff. Just, just you know, just like anybody else is. Uh, and with that, I'll say thanks for watching. Those of you who stuck around, uh, those of you who were interested in things like this, I appreciate you sticking around. This, you know, we had a, a freeze, freeze dried food video the other day. So you know, uh, but a lot of preppers do this. A lot of preppers stack the silver. Uh, it's something good to put your money into. Uh, it'll never fail you. You'll you'll always be able to get your money back out of it. Uh, so when the dollar crashes and dollars are worth nothing, and you know people are hauling around the wheelbarrows full of dollars to buy a loaf of bread, this will still have some value to it. Uh, so anyway. I'm rumbling again. Thanks again for watching, y'all. This is Farmer Sun Prepping. We'll check y'all later.